Here we are in the fifth match of the junior girls team semifinal at the 2012 U.S. Nationals. It should be an interesting one with a chopper with Angela from ICC against Isabel Chu, who also just recently returned back from the World Junior Championships in India. And that was a very snappy forehand smash. And which this is, is going to be really interesting because typically a long pips chopper is going to have some trouble with those short pips that Isabel Chu has on her forehand. It's, it really doesn't give you a whole lot of spin to work with. She's going to roll it over and, and use the placement and then f pick the right ball to go for the kill. Right. I, if I'm in the chopper, I'm reminding myself every time I chop it, I've got to keep it at net level because anything two to three inches up is going to be a strong smash. Well, at the same time, I know Isabel has a nice forehand opening. She can keep rolling it and rolling it. Um, but sometimes that added spin that she puts on it can be used against her by loading up the underspin. You can see that her forehand just technically isn't as sound as the rest of her game, it looks like. Just mechanically, right off the bat, there are a few issues there, so it might be hard for her to stay consistent against the chopper through a long match. I really like Angela's forehand chop. She really goes through that ball. and She's keeping it deep, really forcing Isabel to do something with it. But as a pips out hitter, you've got to favor that side because they should be able to roll the ball up and over countless times till they get the ball they want to smash. And it is tough to judge the amount of spin coming off of a pips opening. Sometimes they get a little bit more spin, other times it's still somewhat dead. That serve is going to work for Isabel as long as she's able to vary it. As the key against the long pips is to not give away how much pace and how much spin is going to be on the ball that you're going to give them. Keep Angela off balance on the serve return and on the openings after that. And Han, as we mentioned earlier, using Todd Swerce as an example of, of using those angles and playing off the side of the table. I know one of our Hall of Fame greats who's going to be here at this tournament presenting the women's singles trophy that has been named after her in Suk Bashan. She always, as a chopper, would point out that when she's chopping, she needs to do the same thing. And I would strongly suggest that Angela, when she's chopping the ball, try to go wide into the backhand, wide to the forehand. So it really forces Isabel to leave that comfort zone of the center of the table. If you just chop off the end of the table, that's so easy to start placing the ball around, but when you chop it wide to the backhand, the opening that doesn't exist then from Isabel's forehand gets a much easier ball. So just like that last one right there, a little bit wider, force Isabel to really step around and not just hang out in the center and kind of target shoot in both directions. Isabel. That forehand just breaking down a little bit again. Really shouldn't be missing an opening like that. That that one's really easy. I mean, that ball popped up from Angela at least six inches above the net, so that's going to be a direct winner. And it's very difficult for a, for a chopper at this age to be able to learn to control the, the pips that well. But if she can, when she's chopping, make sure it's deep, that will be an extra elemental change that Isabel has to worry about because then she's yeah. got to control the lifting of the ball and also wow and there's a little bit of a surprise there I mean this is this is turning into one of those style matchups where Isabel just doesn't look that confident against those deeper chopped balls Angela has been really improving very quickly her cadet world ranking has been shooting up a lot faster than a lot of our other cadets, as you're saying, there's a style matchup I issue there. A lot of the cadets probably have a difficult time playing against defensive players just because they can't generate enough power to go through her. Um, but Angela has been improving. As you said, that forehand chop does look very good. If anything, her footwork could improve. She could you know, get a little bit lower on some of the more difficult chops. But and ev she's eventually, she's also yeah. going to have to build in a strong attack. Right, yeah, but she's looking very good so far this match, just on the, mo on the basics. Um, and Isabel's not really making her do too much more than that. Right. Just giving her 
pretty straightforward attacks into the back end and forehand. Not much going on into the middle or the wide corner so far. And, and clearly, as a pips out player, Isabel should be taking advantage of when she's dropping the ball after a loop, that it's really short, so it forces Angela to take that extra step to come in. You shouldn't be pushing it deep, and then after they return your loop, just putting the ball in the center of the table. You've got to really mix the depth up against a chopper. Choppers going side to side is not that tough, but going in and out, that's where you're going to see a lot more errors. Let's see, when choppers train multi-ball now, these days the modern defensive players train so much in and out because they know players are going to try to and sometimes it's because they're the amount of spin on the ball is so severe that you can't loop it a second time. I mean, going to the slightly larger ball so many years ago where it was tough to chop a heavy top spin short. Now there's so much spin coming off of the previous ball and the ball slows down that the chopper can almost disarm. And that's why you need to be able to drop it short, not just put it over the table again. The choppers in the women's game they're really going to have to deal a lot with more with the placement, whereas on the men's side, a lot of men just try to overpower the right. chopper, uh, loop three, four, five balls continuously as hard as possible. There's a nice counterattack by Angela. The ball was maybe not the perfect one to choose, but just to let Isabel know that she does have a forehand loop and you can't simply put the ball on the table that she will be aggressive. Got the edge, oh, almost got the edge back on that last ball. But Isabel still doesn't look like she's 100% confident in how these points are going. Doesn't seem like she's found the perfect combo. No, she doesn't look too comfortable, right. especially with the footwork. Right. It's so easy to fall asleep against the defensive player, just to stand in the middle of the table as you talked about, Sean and then the defensive player kind of moves you out of that comfort zone and your feet aren't ready to move. And what you don't want to do is start missing pushes. That just means you're not focused on reading the spin. Got to be able to at least keep the ball low by pushing the ball over the table. One thing for defensive players at home, choppers to watch at home, I think, is the timing of the chopping that Angela's using. It's much more of a modern technique, I think, to take the ball actually more towards the top of the bounce than waiting for the ball to drop. It's very difficult to master, but it can put a lot more pressure on the attacking player. It's a lot earlier than a lot of the more traditional choppers right. like to do it. I think if, if you look on the online for all of our people who clearly are web savvy and you see that one super point between Timo Bowl and Ding Song where I think it's like a 59 or 60 shot rally. Ding Song really started that trend of chopping closer to the table. And when you do it, you put so much pressure on the looper to not only loop up but forward. Because if you're that close to the table and they just spin the ball up, that's an attackable counter shot. So, And the, and the trajectory of the ball is different. It can sometimes come along a lot flatter. It just skim the table surface. And it's hard it's to drop shot that ball because there's a lot of pace. Right, and if it's deep on you, then you almost have to back up yeah. in order to loop that ball. So now you're in a situation where it's an aggressive chop that forces you to not only be in proper foot yeah. position, but to spin yeah. up and forward. And on the women's side, uh, Korean chopper Kim Kyung Ah, long time top 10 in the world player. She used the similar technique, almost just chopping the ball down at you and having Almost like practice with her once. A, a per yeah, a perpendicular <laughs> um, style yeah. chop. Practice with her once, and it was probably the most awkward chopper I've ever had to practice with. Um, very difficult to play against. So these are some critical points right now in this fifth and final match in the tie between Gao Jun's table, I'm sorry, ICC and world champions. We saw Gao Jun's table tennis center playing earlier in the semifinal. There's against some Lily great Yip. returns there from Angela, but just missing there with the unforced error. And there getting a little bit ahead of herself, trying to attack with the long pips.
There's a little bit of inexperience. There's two or three straight points where Ange Angela's just made unforced errors, and you don't want to see a chopper doing that. And clearly, if you feel as the offensive player that you can win points when pushing, that gives you so much confidence to pick and choose which ball you attack. Isabel really has to watch out for the ball after she loops because that's where Angela can put the most spin on it. But Angela's now missed a few straight pushes and this is where not having that strong attack really hurts her. But, she's but looking at the body language, it still appears that Angela, a little bit more positive, a little bit more sure of herself, playing her game more comfortably, obviously, as the chopper. But... Isabel has to calm down, take her time, and just put something together that she feels comfortable with, not play so reactive. That's a careful ball, good. Got to push on that one. Bit of a lucky break there by catching the back edge of the table on a ball that could have floated off the end. And there, Isabel evening the match at one game apiece. This, of course, is the deciding match of the team tie between ICC and World Champion Table Tennis Academy. is trying to make some adjustments. I think Coach Constantini will be telling Angela to focus a little bit more to cut out those five or six unforced errors during that game. It's not really like Isabel went through her, which is what you want as a defensive player for the offensive player to, to try to have to hit through you, but really didn't force Isabel in that last game to, to win the points. It's really the case as a chopper. You must eliminate any of the simple errors, the, ch the slight changes of spin. Knowing that you need to push the ball deeper, chop it at an angle is one thing, but when you're missing a counter push, um, that just needs to get tightened up a lot faster. Even something that easy there, it's a short chop serve and she's trying to keep it deep, but if you're gonna miss it, miss it on the short side, don't miss it on the long side. I think Stefan probably mentioned if you are going to push the ball to Isabel, make sure it's going deep and you can take some spin off of it. There's that lack of an attack really hurting her because she made several very good pushes and got an easy pop-up and just wasn't confident enough to take the, take the smash. It's like both players, whenever the other one has a rhythm or takes offense, it's to their own detriment. That's the heavy ball right there. Isabel, after she loops that first ball, Angela can get twice the amount of spin on the chop. Isabel, I feel like, is making a mistake with that forehand because she can really hit a dead ball and roll a dead ball just like this, but then the dead ball is going to come back. But instead, she's trying to put a little extra spin on the ball as if she's playing against a normal offensive or inverted player mm -hmm. and having to deal with the ball that comes back off of that. If Isabel were to make that same forehand opening and take it down the line, she'd get a much cleaner ball to deal with than the long pips on the backhand side. Not saying that Angela wouldn't change her racket and use the inverted or use the long pips on the forehand side, but it's going to be an easier ball. It's going to pop up a little bit more. It's tougher to chop on the forehand as it's dipping down than on the backhand where you can really step into the ball. Just really, Angela's catching her in a one, one mode, just straight down the line, yeah. backhand chop to forehand loop angle, which is going to favor her because it's a shorter table and 
Isabel's not really forcing her to cover the wide forehand. It's impressive that Angela's competing here because uh, you might have noticed that she's got her right knee taped up. She's been dealing with a knee issue since July, I hear, is what I hear from her parents. So she had to withdraw from the junior trials to limit her matches at this tournament, but it's nice to see her playing in the club competition. So what Angela's doing often is after she chops the first loop back, it's so heavy, then her next chop, she'll often put no spin on the ball, which doesn't give Isabel much to work with. So she's just constantly trying to change the spin. But I am surprised, oh, that's a very bad backhand hit there. Surprised that Isabel hasn't moved the ball more over to her forehand side just to get an easier ball to deal with versus the heavy, heavy backhand underspin. That's a very nice change of spin with the long pip bump that Angela did to get to game point. That is so heavy right there. That's an easier ball to smash. But that heavy ball, especially the depth on it, is causing Isabel to lose game number three. And it in a little bit of a hole right now. And she hasn't looked comfortable all match. And she's struggled with her footwork, especially after the first opening, as you noted. And having your feet in position makes such a big difference as to whether you can actually attack that second ball, that very heavy backspin, or whether you can make a good drop shot or push off that ball. But instead, if you're just caught and that chop is deep, there's really nothing you can do. So Han, you're Stefan, you're giving tips to your player. Isabel's having some issues, not only reading the spin, but kind of getting the upper hand in the attack. Do you advise her to maybe just go completely safe and force the chopper to start attacking, or I do you? I don't think so. I think um, there are a few things that need to be adjusted. One is keeping her feet active, finding a way to do that, getting your forehand in from maybe the backhand side just so that you can get something going to where you're moving rather than staying static. Um, I think one of the keys is actually th the pushing is working, but you can't do it all the time because the longer the points go, the more to your detriment it is as an attacker generally. I think she needs to actually vary the serve spin placement a little bit more to give herself a few more easy points get three or four easy points during the game, it's going to give you a lot more confidence. Or It'll maybe get like an easier position to make that first attack. Right. Or even, even if you don't get the free point, at least put the defensive player out of position, maybe get them stretching on the run. So right now it just seems like the points are a little bit too routine. Same thing over and over yeah, again. Just again, looking at the body language of Isabel right now, she... She doesn't look too positive. It looks like she's a little bit more kind of frustrated, but at least that's some four. That's this probably what the third forehand smash we've seen in these four games. Mm -hmm. We saw it at the beginning of the match, yeah. and then we didn't see it at all. So you're right, Han. Getting her forehand into play and oh, that ball went over the net, came back, and went back over it. Kind of just but, hugged but the these are the type of points she needs. She needs the easy pop-ups right off the serve or the serve receive and to be able to just take a couple of cracks at it and win some quick points so that she's got that little bit of confidence so that when the longer points come along and she maybe she does miss one, she's not as frustrated. Right. And anytime you can win an easy point against a defensive player, it makes the game that much more fun to play because if you're trailing mm -hmm. six to three and you realize that any mistake is going to get amplified it's so difficult it's such an uphill battle because to win a point yeah. requires so much effort yeah twice the amount of work since you generally choppers should not be missing the pushes or the easy openings and what's happening as the points gotten longer when isabel does get the opening she's rushing it because she feels like she wants to end the point and with her style it's it's reasonable it's it really is understandable that with the style that she plays she's not used to playing Right, 10 shot rallies. Right, with, with a pips out hitting against offensive players, they just won't last past five if they do. But again, looking at the difference in their facial expressions, it seems that Angela is more excited to be playing the match where maybe the pressure of this rivalry between the two clubs is something 
factoring into Isabel's tightness right now. It's also a little bit of familiarity since Isabel did train at ICC. And there, Isabel just serving off the table now, just a bit of a lack of focus while the score is only one point of a difference at five to six. That's a very nice forehand hit. Yeah, but Angela's uh, attitude this match has been really commendable. The number of lucky balls, net dribblers coming from Pips out player, which is expected, and she hasn't gotten frustrated or shown any hint of frustration over the entire match. That's a very nice it's attack by Isabon. Surprised, Han, if you count the number of times she's gone to the forehand side, it's really been minimal. It's mostly on the push, and she hasn't really attacked a whole lot to the forehand side. It, it's not like Angela's counterattacking with her forehand that she needs to be afraid of it, but it does open up the table a little bit more. And I think part of that is coaching philosophy. A lot of coaches prefer to go to the pips against a defensive player like this because they feel like it's a more predictable ball. Which is funny because as a lower rated player, they tend to want to go away from the pips, but right. the higher level players go at it every single yeah. time. And it's something that the coach and the player have to have that teamwork and understanding of what the player is comfortable with. And in this case, Stefan must feel that Isabel will be more comfortable going to the backhand side into the long pips. I think right now at 9-7, these next two points. Oh, I don't know why she looped that one. That ball was high enough to smash one more time. I think just not moving her feet as much as she could. A great point and a critical point for Isabel. Up two points, nine to seven, needing to get back to level the match against the chopper that, that is really going to hurt. And we've seen the longer the rallies, definitely the chopper has the ability to change the spin. But as you said, Hunt, winning those easy points directly off the serve can be such a boost. And that's a major relief for Isabel, being able to win those two easy points to close out that game and level the match two games apiece and now it's one game for the entire team match it's kind of a little bit of poetic justice these two great clubs in the bay area going head to head and to have not only a great fourth game fourth match which was a rematch of prachi and lily but then to have a doubles that went into the final stages of the competition and now to have this final singles match go to the fifth game. The winner of this game, which will send them into the finals, will be playing against the Gaojun Table Tennis Center. The very strong team of Olympians, Erica Wu and Ariel Shing. Umpire has called time on the break in between games, so we'll be starting the final game of this team match. That ball is so heavy. Nice return. Got the edge. Coach Constantini <laughs> looks completely amused over sideline at how this is <laughs> potentially happening. So many opportunities for ICC in this team match with looking so strong in the doubles. At seven to five, actually it was seven to three, then a mini comeback, then he called the timeout and then to see that lead evaporate. Then to have Angela so close in game four
Isabel showed a lot of patience working for that point, but it seemed like that last forehand that went long was a little riskier than the earlier ones. That's a very, I'm not going to say careless mistake. Maybe it's more inexperience, but as a chopper, you should not be p chopping the ball a few feet off the end of the table during an extended rally. I also think Angela needs to change the placement of some of those chops. They're going very deep, but maybe she needs to force a little bit of action. Or maybe even, I don't know if she has this shot in her, but she's going to chop with her back and maybe add a little bit of side spin to the ball right. or to the center of the table so that when change the placement to a location uh, where the opponent has a hard time just pushing the ball back and is forced mm -hmm. to open you know, Angela's chops generally go off the end of the table and by that I mean it's not going off the side angle it's coming off the far end right. so it makes it much easier for Isabel to choose when she wants to step around And similar only on the forehand being allowed a little side spin when necessary. So just change the angle a little bit, and be more deceptive. Nice forehand attack there by Angela. Sometimes adding that side spin to your chop will force the opponent when they open up just to mistime the ball, maybe have it too close to their body. And, and there's a bad miss from Isabel to give Angela a one point lead in the changeover. Choppers love to see offensive players go for shots that just aren't quite there instead of working for the point. Nice idea by Angela to go to the backhand, hit with the long pips. But her balls are right now tending to float a little bit long. That chop was just a little bit too high. Isabel took advantage. Now leading by two points, seven to five. So Max calls the timeout. Just from a rules perspective, this is a team event. So when the coach calls a timeout, if the player were to say, you know, I wouldn't like to have a timeout right now, I feel ready to continue, the umpire must go with the coach's call. Whereas in singles, the coach calls a timeout, the player says no, the umpire must go with the player. So we don't have that many team tournaments in the US. We have some great big ones during Thanksgiving weekend. But that is something to be aware of just from a rules standpoint, who's actually running the show. From experience as a player, when you have a capable coach, it's often better to defer to the coach even if the player feels that he or she doesn't necessarily need the timeout because... Coach is normally seeing something that's so obvious right. that they need to communicate that. Again, it's what you're talking about from the third person perspective. It's very different from when you're on the table and experiencing those emotional highs and lows. Sometimes the coach sees something that the coach feels needs to be addressed yeah. now. And sometimes, of course, the coach is going to make a wrong call, but that's the coach player relationship yeah. as, as a team. That's something that you have to work out if you're through the relationship. Right. If, if you're comfortable deferring, that means coming out of the break, you're not going to second guess the coach, which is critical to staying positive. So here we are 7-5, game five of match five. Yeah. 
both players playing exceptionally well. Angela moving the ball around, changing the spin, but That's Isabel not biting on any of those. And Stefan, I think, is very good coach tactically. And Isabel remaining very patient there on that last point. On oh, a beautiful nice. combination there by Angela. Yeah. Nice yeah. step, deep, chopped it, set up an easy counterattack. We haven't seen Angela counterattack all that much so far in this match. And boy, there's one of those cheap points that she's really been on the I losing end. I think this end. is uh, towards the tail end of this game, especially after the timeout. You can see Isabel not wanting to attack on anything that she doesn't feel comfortable with. That's what I was thinking as they started this fifth game that Stefan might say. Stefan might say that don't force the ball because you don't need to. You don't have an attack coming at you that's going to change the outcome of the point. You're going to get a lot of freebies by these just easy mistakes. And as long as you keep your feet moving, you're really in good shape. And now three match points to win the team tie. One saved match point. There's a little hesitation there. She had the shot and it was the right shot to go for, but just that little bit of hesitation can completely throw the timing off. And an excellent serve by Angela. Two, putting three, three match points saved. Instant pressure with the nice deep side spin serve. And again against Pips, that's a very effective serve to do because it forces them to make their own spin. Great wow. Play from Angela. Now four, just four straight points. Just rattling them off. And Isabel really needs to slow it down here. It's a little bit of inexperience. Again, the aggressive serve. What a change in streakiness in this match from ICC looking like they had missed so many opportunities, both in the doubles and in the fourth game of the final match, too. And the surprising end to that match because Isabel had played the previous few points so consistently and safely and then just wasn't able to slow down the tempo when she started losing a couple of points.